January 11th, 2022. At 7.58 this morning, my dad, Bobby slash Robert, that's what it says on his birth certificate, Joseph Rosso uh, was pronounced dead. Last night I stayed up at the house with him, uh, with my mom, uh, Miranda, who's, who's uh, living nurse taking care of him, till uh, 3.15. And um, we knew the time was near. I, 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 he was read his last rites on um, Thursday. Last coherent conversation we had was Friday. So we knew, I, I actually thought Saturday would be the day. Nevertheless, um, so Bob Rosso uh, was, was born in Hartford, Arkansas and was uh, the son of a coal miner. They lived here in Hartford. He would uh, say it was the best place to grow up ever and the best place to die, he would say that too. Anyway, uh, when the coal mine industry got uh, got bad or shut down, my, my grandparents moved to California, and that's when my dad met my mom. My mom was working in a box office, a movie theater called The Strand, and uh, that, that was history. Um, through his life, he had many accomplishments. He was a labor, labor union, worked his way up to job steward in the labor union. Uh, became a business uh, business agent for local 802 in Wilmington, uh, president of the local, vice president, president, then ultimately business manager of the local 802 in Wilmington. Again, this is the Labor's International of North America. And also, he's a California rep, worked for the International. After his retirement in 95, uh, he moved, him and my mom moved back to Arkansas here to retire, and he ended up becoming the mayor of Hartford for a period of time. He died, oh, I can't even think of the disease. He had the same disease actually the actor Dudley Moore had. Uh, it's worse than Parkinson's, it's, 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 it's horrible. It shuts down motor skills, shuts down, you can't walk. Uh, anyway, my dad had three kids, uh, my, my, my three older sisters and me. And, uh, I don't have any complaints about how, how, how we were raised to grow up. We had our problems like any other family, but I had a good childhood and I was extremely spoiled being the youngest boy, and especially in an Italian family, with a big, uh, uh, big Italian Catholic family on my mom's side, 26, 27 first cousins, whatever it is. Um, I know that, uh, I was a really big disappointment to my dad. Uh, he was a working guy, a hard working guy, and I took, the, I took on the drug thing at an early age. And um, he, they, he tried all he could to, uh, I mean, to, to help me be him. I mean, I, my life was uh, handed to me on a silver platter. I was gonna be my dad. In the labor union, my career was handed to me, but I couldn't stop selling drugs. Um, I would say that uh, as an adult, I spent more time avoiding him than I did with him because of, of, of what I did and what I did was sell drugs. And, and let me be clear, I wasn't a violent drug. I never even had, a, I never even owned a gun. I never even had a violent act over drugs. Not to say it's good, but anyway. So I know I, know I was a disappointment. I mean, uh, I, you know, especially coming, where, coming from where he came from. Uh, just, just he, he didn't, he didn't see this one coming. Meaning me, and, and uh, um, as many of you may or may not know, in 1997, I was arrested uh, and ultimately sentenced to life without the possibility of release for a nonviolent drug crime. I spent 23 years, eight months, and one day, and and was released under compassionate release for a host of reasons. I think. Judge Timothy L. Brooks out of the 
the Western District of Arkansas for granting my compassion release because he hasn't granted, uh, I don't even know if he's granted any other ones. Because I was allowed to see my dad, he, he, him granting me release allowed me to spend uh, two days shy of nine months with him. Even though I will say the person I got to spend time with was not really my dad. There were some moments, but it was like a caricature of my dad because of the disease. Um, last night, about one o'clock, I went in there to the room and uh, he'd been basically in a, in a comatose state since Saturday and uh, he cracked his eyes open. Uh, uh, Miranda was right there with me and, she, and, and he got both of them open and I went and ran and told my mom and she came back in the room and she was able to say something to him and when she leaned over and kissed he kissed her back and uh, he started he cried tears came out of his eyes <laughs> uh, I had to go home I had to get some rest. I'm, I'm running on empty. And uh, when my mom called me just at like 8.01, like I said, he was pronounced dead at 7.58. The first thing I felt was anger. It was anger. And it was anger at having been sentenced to life without the possibility of release and losing so much time with my family for drugs, for drugs, not weapons, not hurting people. I'm not saying that I wasn't a career drug offender. I'm not saying the government didn't get the right guy. But a life sentence for drugs when, when, when the, uh, the normal amount of time somebody spends on a murder conviction is 15 years. Terrorism, 20, that's the average stay. And there's, there's 3,000 people left in federal prison just like me. Worse, those who are sentenced under mandatory life, that law doesn't even exist anymore. They did away with that statute. It's now mandatory 25, which is still insane. And, and, and I just can't help but just feel so angry that I had to spend all that fucking time and I have not been angry up until this point. Matter of fact, I took it on the chin and said, you know what? Hell, maybe I deserved it. Look at my life now, it's going good, but no, that wasn't right. It wasn't right. It's not right that everybody's still in there. I got like a lot of friends in there right now. There's still, I got family, I, I do that legal assistance stuff and I got families right now calling, calling me and begging me for help. Because they've got guys that, that are doing life for drugs. And we're not talking about violence. We're talking about just drugs. Now this one lady called me the other day and she hit the nail on the head. She said she sees her husband in photos. Because COVID's got the whole visits uh, screwed up in the Bureau of Prisons. She sees him in photos. And she sees the life going out of him. She sees him aging. She sees him deflated because... We keep hearing in federal prison that the laws are going to change, the laws are going to change, the laws are going to change, and they don't. For 20 fucking years, I heard that the laws were going to change, and they didn't. Until 2018, when Trump, out of all people, got it through. Man, it just, it really, really makes me mad. I swear to God, it does. I was offered two fucking years to snitch, and because I said no, they gave me mandatory life. Man, it's just so, it's just so wrong. And you know, I know I'm just, I know I'm just venting, but man, and what do politicians do? Like, they just keep us at each other's throat. Republican, Democrat, Trump, Biden, Biden, and Biden. Biden did this. Biden's one of the architects of all this shit that's got everybody locked in prison. And you know, and everybody says, even, even as, even as a, as a prisoner, when we hear people got 10 years or less, when I call you got a 10 year sentence, like county jail time, that's not much time. 10 years is a lot of time. It, it, this whole sentencing structure, it's just so fucked up. It, it's got to change, man. It 
Anyway, yeah, yeah. I don't want to take away from the fact that I did it. I was wrong. I was guilty. I did it. But I never should have got life without parole. I never should have had to get on a compassionate release. And there's never, there shouldn't be all these people stuck in federal prison with mandatory life sentences. When the law has already changed, it just wasn't run retroactive. It wasn't run retroactive. That, that's typical when they change laws. Anyway, <laughs> oh man, this is fucked up. I never got to know. I never really got to know. And that's my fault. And that, that, that part's my fault. <laughs> Something's got to change. I love you, Dad. Rest in peace.